আপনারা দেখছেন টকিং পয়েন্ট সৌজন্যে মাহবুব অ্যান্ড কো অ্যাকাউন্ট Welcome back. Before we went on our mandatory break, we were talking to our distinguished guest, Right Honorable Stephen Timms, MP from Eastham and Shadow Minister for, sorry, Shadow Minister for Employment. Yes. Uh, Tim, uh, sorry, Stephen, uh, we were talking about your constituency and what is the makeup of your constituency, Eastham? It's a very, very diverse mm -hmm. uh, It's a very big constituency. Area. It's, a, it? it's a large constituency, 90,000 voters, one of the biggest. 90,000. So what would be the population? Uh, ooh, pass. I mean, the, the population of Newham now yeah. is well over 300. Thousand in, in total, I think about 330,000. I think you know, it's interesting. I was the leader of Newham Council for a while in the early 1990s, mm -hmm. and at that point, the population of Newham was going down, it got mm -hmm. down to about 208,000, was the lowest figure mm -hmm. I remember. But everybody thought it was going to carry on going mm -hmm. down, mm -hmm. but it, what it was didn't. the reason for that? Ah, well, people were moving away from London at mm -hmm. the time, but really over the last 20 years, people have all been attracted to London, people have wanted to come yes. to London, and so now, you know, not 200,000, well over 300,000 is the population mm -hmm. of Newham, and it's going to go up more. London as a whole is expanding. It's been an attractive place. There have been jobs available for people, economic opportunities. Right. People have wanted to be part of the city. And I, I really welcome that change yeah. that New and, and London are places that people want to be. But it's a very diverse community. We say of Newham that it's the most diverse community on the planet, and mm -hmm. that's probably right. So the, the biggest single group is white English mm -hmm. people, mm -hmm. but they're only 16 or 17 percent. Mm -hmm. You've got almost as many people f from India and Sri Lanka, mm -hmm. and then uh, there are Pakist people from Pakistan, people mm -hmm. from Bangladesh, around about 10 percent of the population, people from Africa, from the Caribbean, from Eastern Europe, South America even. There are mm -hmm. people from really every corner of the planet in the borough, all people who make their home in mm. our borough and it's one of the strengths of the area you know when the london team that was bidding for the olympic games right, yeah. to come to stratford right. they took with them a group of 40 young people mainly from langdon school in my constituency but also yeah. from other secondary schools chosen at random and they reflected to the international olympic committee what London yes. is like today. They were enthusiastic, energetic, lively young people. Their roots were in every different part of the planet, but they were all proud of their home city that's London, the city that they belong to. And I think that communicated a really optimistic picture of the future of the world, of people living together, working together harmoniously, enjoying one another's company. I think it was that optimism that clinched it for London, right. the reason right. the Olympic Games came to our part of London in the summer of 2012. Yep. Yep. After the euphoria and the London Olympics were held, do you think the London Olympic Games uh, have helped Newham? Yes, I'm sure they have. I mean, a lot of people got jobs during the Olympic Games. Yeah. Of course, they were temporary jobs. Yep. But what's interesting is that many of them seem to have Having got that experience under their belt, they've been able to get jobs. Yes. They've got that's absolutely right. That was the break that they needed. They've been able to get jobs elsewhere. We wouldn't have the Westfield Shopping Centre there True. today True. if it wasn't for the Olympic Games. Now that's eight thousand jobs. Many of them people from Newham and Tower Hamlets. Mm -hmm. About mm -hmm. two thousand from Newham. But, but who are the shoppers? Westfield. Well, they come from all over the place, right. um, but they're spending their money in Newham and mm -hmm. creating employment in Newham. And for my, uh, my money, that's a very good thing. So that's a plus for us. A lot of people I know who are out of work have been able to get jobs in Westfield. And we're going to see other things, I think, on the coattails, if you like, of yeah. the Olympic Games. For example, um, I was speaking last week to the developers behind the Asian Business Port. This is going to be a very big development in the Royal Docks in Newham, mm -hmm. just across the dock from London City Airport next to the University of East London. Right. And they're expecting about 20,000 jobs there mm -hmm. e eventually 
uh, phase one will just be three or 4,000 jobs. And mostly that's going to be Chinese banks and financial institutions. There'll be right. other tenants as well, but it's the, right. it, the developer is Chinese. The, the, the main tenants will be Chinese. But I think that's going to be a great investment for our area, creating a lot of jobs. What I want to see is more, many more opportunities in our area for young people who've True. grown up True. in our area True. in the True. future than there were in the past. I think we can be really optimistic and, and about then, the prospects for young people, but job, there's work to be done. When they've got the job, they've got their own business or, or, or professions, you see, they will contribute in turn to the area. They will. They will. They will not move out. And we've had a very serious problem of unemployment in our area for a long time. Unemployment is still a good deal higher mm -hmm. in our part of London than elsewhere. We really need to change that. And I think we've got the opportunity to change that if we play our cards right, if you like. How are the, the Bangladeshis doing in your area? Well, I in education, Bangladeshis are doing really well. Bangladeshi girls are doing fab fabulously well. The boys have got a bit of catching up to do. But we're making good progress. The schools are delivering. The schools are doing a much better job than they were in the past, thanks to the efforts that Newham Council has made. And of course, we're seeing a number of new schools, free schools and right. academies, the University Technical College opening up. So we're going to see better education opportunities. I think we're seeing a lot of young people now staying on into university, higher education, and, and making sure they've got the, the skills and the qualifications they need to succeed in the future. Right. What sort of business uh, opportunities you have for Bangladeshi community in your area? Well, I want to see Bangladeshi young people being equipped for the very highest opportunities in every part of the economy. Of course, there are uh, Bangladeshi young people setting up in business for themselves, taking advantage of their connections with Bangladesh mm -hmm. and the fact they're at home in Britain and, and using the connections at both sides to set up businesses, to uh, do media Mm -hmm. uh, things to do uh, trading activities there are opportunities there for entrepreneurs and I want to see those entrepreneurs being successful but I also want to see Bangladeshi young people going into politics going True. into the media True. True. becoming journalists mm -hmm. doing well in in banking and, and finance mm -hmm. as many of them are in you know the huge banks in Canary Wharf these Chinese institutions coming into new and Bangladeshi young people should be able to take advantage of those opportunities and if the schools and the colleges are doing their job well, right. then they will be able to. And I am very encouraged by the, the rising standard of the achievements of Bangladeshi young people in our part of London. Uh, what is the crime situation in your constituency? Well, we've got a serious crime problem. Uh, it's not as serious, perhaps, as you might expect, given the extent of disadvantage and unemployment in our area very often uh, you know, high crime is associated with a high level of, of disadvantage. The police, I think, have done some quite impressive work in our area. So we've got a problem, yep. but it's, it's, it's being addressed. And um, the, 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 the people I speak to on the whole are encouraged. I did hold a public meeting recently in the Browning Road area of my mm -hmm. constituency mm -hmm. because a number of constituents came to me and said there'd been a series of muggings in their mm -hmm. area. Mm -hmm. And they were upset about it, quite rightly. So I, I held a public meeting. We got the, uh, the local police sergeant along. The community was there. They've decided to work towards setting up a, a neighbourhood watch for the area right. so that the people and the police are much better connected and in touch with each other and I hope that'll, that'll help. And you know, if there are other problems around the, uh, the constituency that people would like to tell me about then I'm very keen and eager to Do you have a problem of uh, the greater number of betting shops? Well, yeah, well this is uh, one of my uh, uh, deep concerns. We have a very large number of betting shops in East Ham High Street. We have a very large number in Green Street. We have a large number in Stratford as well. As well. But the ones that I'm concerned about in my constituency are in High Street we, and We could probably talk Street. about it in detail in the next segment, but just briefly, that uh, it seems that uh, the betting shops crop up in, in, in areas of where people are not very well off. You're right. They cluster in those yeah. areas. In my view, they're taking advantage of people in areas like mine and I want to see the law change mm -hmm. so that councils can stop the proliferation of these shops and the very addictive yep. high-speed terminals they've got in them because far too many people are losing far too much money 
in, on those machines. And at the moment, there's nothing the council can do to stop it. The law needs to be changed. I thought that council was all in all when they gave permission to open a shop. No, if, you, if the premises were previously some sort of financial institution, mm -hmm. you don't need planning permission to open up a betting shop. It's mm -hmm. an, uh, frankly an anomaly <laughs> in the law. What we've called for in the House of Commons is for the law to be changed so that betting shops have a separate planning use class of their own. And then anyone converting a premise, whatever it is, to a betting shop would have to apply for planning permission right. and the local authorities would be able to refuse them and they'd ha the council would then have good grounds for withstanding the subsequent appeal. At the moment, even if the council says no, the betting shops can just appeal and nine times out of ten they get the go-ahead. Uh, in the next segment we'll talk in detail about uh, this and other matters. Uh, it's nice to know that uh, you are aware of this problem uh, in this borough, Tower Hamlets. We also have the same problems. See, a number of shops have increased, betting shops. I think we have uh, more betting shops than we have mosques in this area. Mm. And a lot of uh, senior citizens are concerned because... You know, in East Ham High Street, we've got five branches just of Paddy Power. And then yeah. you've got Betfair and Corals and <laughs> William Hill and all the others okay. as well. Can we Jennings take a break Bet. now? And then we come back and talk about it. We take a break and when we come back, we talk to our distinguished guest again on the same topic and there are some other topics of great importance to you and to all of us. Don't go away. अपनारा देखें टकिंग पॉइंट सौजन्े महबूब एंड क्रू अकाउंटेंट